Hi, this is Stuart Weems and welcome to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you simple, easy to understand strategies, insights and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. And in this episode, I'd like to talk about working from home tax deductions or often referred to as home office expenses. So obviously, uh, lots of employers are now asking uh, their staff to work from home. Um, and some of you might already do that on a regular basis or irregular basis, um, but it might be new to some of you as well. And I thought it'd be good to go through um, what are the tax consequences? You know, what deductions are you entitled to claim uh, and what evidence you need to substantiate those claims? Um, so the first thing I would say is that obviously record keeping is paramount. The onus of proof is on the taxpayer to substantiate any tax deductions they claim. So that is if the tax office decides to uh, subject your return to an audit, uh, unless you can prove that the, that you are entitled to that claim, the ATO will just simply deny the claim. Very, very simple. So it's almost uh, guilty until proven innocent in some ways when it, get, it comes to tax. Uh, also, uh, whilst your tax agent needs to um, exercise due care and skill in preparing your tax return, they don't take the risk. You are the taxpayer. You are signing the tax return. At the end of the day, you are taking the risk and the, a defence um, that is that, you know, oh, well, I just left it to, I, I gave all my tax deductions to my accountant and I left it to him um, or them or her. Uh it won't necessarily hold up. I mean, if the if the tax agent has been completely negligent, um, then you might have a valid claim. But the point is, you need to um, sort of take responsibility for that. We're obviously in the 2019-2020 financial year. Um, so those that use a tax agent will likely not have to lodge their return until March 2021 or even possibly uh, mid-May uh, 2021 which is quite some time away, obviously. And it's going to be difficult, I think, to remember what you did uh, this month uh, in a year's time, for example, to sort of think back and find the records and those sorts of things. So um, I thought it was time to go through this information so that, and I would encourage or counsel you to, to start recording this stuff somewhere now uh, so that you have it to hand, it's fresh in your mind, and when it comes to providing that information to your tax agent, uh, it's going to be a whole lot easier. Okay, so let's go through the expenses that you can claim, and then I'll talk about a few expenses that you cannot claim, uh, just to make sure that we're on the on the same page. Okay, the first one is running costs, and running costs refer to heating, cooling, lighting, cleaning, and so on. And there's really two methods that you can utilise uh, to calculate your running cost tax deduction. The, there's a fixed rate method, which is really the easiest and simple method. Uh, and there's an actual cost uh, method, which is uh, a little bit more complex. And probably, you know, unless your situation is very unique, I probably wouldn't advise using the actual cost method. It just makes it more, it just makes it more difficult for yourself. Uh, so the fixed rate method means that you're entitled to claim a deduction of 52 cents for every hour you've worked from home. And you don't have to then uh, worry about recording, you know, what is your heating bill and what is the square meterage of your dedicated office space, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you need to keep uh, either a complete record of the hours that you've worked uh, from home or you need to keep a, you know, if you do uh, regular work from home um, uh, throughout the year, then you need to keep a diary that uh, for a four-week period that is representative of the whole year. Uh, and then you can extrapolate the hours from that four-week uh, period. So if you're not used to working from home, that's not a common thing for you to do. Uh, clearly, then it's important to record the number of hours that you've done uh, during this period of shutdown as a result of coronavirus. Uh, multiply that by 52 cents and there is your tax deduction. The alternate method method is the actual cost and you can use this method if you do have a dedicated workspace. Um, but if you've got a dedicated workspace that is also used by other family members for recreational activities, then you need to consider that as well and apportion the expenses. Um, and you would still need to keep a four-week diary or an actual record of hours worked in order to support 
your apportionment of you know things expenses such as power you're going to apportion a work related uh, portion and then a non-work related portion so you need to have the records for that can get quite um, finicky for uh, you know unless the tax deduction is going to be substantial it's probably not worth the effort and I'd just go with the fixed rate uh, option the next tax deduction is consumables that's things like such as software subscriptions you know if you've had to subscribe to zoom or, or something like that working for home paper uh, printer ink those sorts of things retain your tax receipts uh, if they've u- been used exclusively for work purposes then they'll be tax deductible uh, mobile and internet expenses, uh, another common one. Uh, so there's two methods, again, that you can utilise. There's the uh, just a fixed tax deduction method and then there's a claim of actual expenses. So the fixed tax deduction is just $50 and that covers your phone and internet usage. You don't need to provide uh, very much support uh, for that. You can just put an annual claim of $50, not a big deduction, I, I get it. Um, the alternate use is uh, you can apportion uh, based on actual expenses, but you're going to need to have evidence of how you're apportioning work-related and non-work-related use. Um, and the things to consider is the um, of what you're using your device for and what you're using your internet for. Um, so voice calls, text messages, data and app usage, they're the, th- the, three, the four things that you need to consider both what you're using for personal purposes and also what you're using for um, uh, 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 work purposes. Uh, So it's possible that you do all your phone calls from work, but really you're using most of the data because you're you're, um, downloading music or um, playing games or something like that. The ATO is going to look at that and go, well, actually, you're actually using your phone mostly for personal use, so we, we think it should be a minority work-related use. Again, you have to keep a four-week diary that's representative of the full year in order to make that claim. Um, A lot of work for potentially not a massive impact on your tax return. Uh, And I would question, again, unless you do have a dedicated phone for work that's not reimbursed by the employer, um, then it's probably just deferring to the $50 tax deduction. Uh, Lastly, computer uh, and office equipment. Um, You're obviously, you know, if you're using that, again, exclusively for work-related purposes, then if the cost of that equipment is less than $300, you can claim a full tax deduction in the financial year the purchase was made. If the equipment costs more than $300, you must appreciate that item over its useful life. Um, Note that equipment that's used for both personal and private use Uh, sorry, private and business work-related use needs to be apportioned. So if you've got a printer at home and your kids are using it to print off their schoolwork or schoolwork as well, um, then uh, that needs to be apportioned. Uh, So they're the the main categories, four main categories of deductions, running costs, consumables, uh, mobile phone and internet uh, expenses and computer and office equipment. Um, uh, probably occupancy and equipment are probably going to be the two major ones uh, that might might arise as a result of this uh, compulsory work from home as a result of the coronavirus shutdown. Uh, let's talk about some expenses that you're probably not able to claim. Uh, the first one is rent and mortgage interest. Uh, so generally, if you've got a home office, you cannot claim rent and mortgage interest as an expense, not even apportion the claim. Uh, However, if you have a dedicated uh, uh, work portion of your home that is your principal place of work, then you might be able to claim these occupancy expenses. Uh, So that is if you had, for example, I don't know, a a separate sort of unit at the back of your property uh, where you saw clients, that clients would visit that premise and you had no other office, for example, uh, well, then you can probably apportion the claim in that situation. But generally, if it's just working from home or you've got a home office, you can't claim, if you're renting, you can't claim a portion of your rent expense. And if you own if you own the property and have a mortgage, you can't claim a portion of the interest expense. Also, another one, travel. Uh, so if you have to go into the office to pick up equipment, um, generally you're not entitled to claim a tax deduction for travel between work and home. 
um, or even home office and, and work office, uh, I think that would be quite a tenuous uh, claim. Um, uh, if you uh, have a home office, uh, you can't claim for um, certain government expenses. Uh, that is if you're using the kind of actual cost method. So um, you can include power and, um, and, and gas if for, for heating and these sorts of things, but you can't apportion things like council rates or land tax or water rates or anything like that. Um, and lastly, if you get reimbursed for the expenses uh, from your employer, you obviously can't claim that as an expense uh, because it hasn't been a personal expense to you. You've actually been, uh, you've entitled to receive the reimbursement. Um, so they're the expenses that you can't claim that you uh, obviously have to avoid. Um, from a capital gains tax perspective, if you claim a tax deduction in respect to a home office, it shouldn't have any tax, uh, capital gains tax consequences. However, if you, cha- if you claim occupancy expenses, so that is if you do have a dedicated portion of your home that is your principal workplace and therefore you are entitled to claim part of the interest in respect to the mortgage to, to, to buy that property, um, then you, will, you won't be entitled to the full main residence exemption. You will then have to apportion the main residence exemption um, based on the square meterage, you know, the floor, floor area of uh, that is that um, work-related uh, space. Um, so that's another thing to consider, particularly if it's not going to be a material claim. Uh, you might decide not to claim uh, any interest because you want to retain the full main residence exemption. So the ATO's golden rules, I guess, in respect to uh, home office expenses, there's really three things that are going to determine whether your claim is eligible uh, if if it falls outside the categories um, that I've uh, previously explained. Uh, firstly, uh, the taxpayer must have incurred the expense themselves and not been reimbursed, so it's got to come out of your own pocket. Uh, the, the second thing is the expense must be incurred in gaining or producing accessible income. So there needs to be a connection and nexus with accessible income. So that is that your employer has required you to have that software or that equipment in order to be able to do your job. Um, and the claim must comply with substantiation uh, rules. So if you don't have the logbook uh, for four weeks, uh, representing a four-week period of the year, or an actual logbook for the whole year, uh, then don't risk making the claim. So they're the three things that you need to think about. Lastly, remember, a little word of caution, the onus of proof is on you. The last thing you want to do is attract an ATO audit just so you can save another $50 in tax. It's obviously, we none of us want to pay any more tax than uh, what we absolutely must uh, pay according to the law. But by the same token, you don't want to be too aggressive uh, and overstate uh, tax deductions that you don't have enough substantiation for just because you can save a few dollars. The ATO's data matching uh, processes and audit processes and so forth uh, are now uh, greatly automated, so they, they're very uh, cost-effective to roll out for the ATO, and they're very effective. You just don't want to um, raise a red flag and invite an audit. I've included in the uh, blog a link to the ATO's uh, Home Office Expense Calculator, and so you can go through and uh, put in all the details there and it sort of take you through uh, what deductions you're entitled to. Uh, so there you go. Uh, hopefully working from home is going to save you a little bit of tax, but it's probably not going to save you a mountain of tax, but at least that gives you a, a, a good overview of what you are and aren't entitled to. Uh, so I hope you're keeping uh, safe and well. Uh, and continue to keep uh, safe and well. And until next week, bye for now.